revised total coil form with the seasonal system requirements. I know a lot of people are really kind of scared about this. But these are practices that hopefully are already in place. Um, a non-community public water supply is that not operated on a year-round basis and you start up and shut down any portion of the public water supply at the beginning and end of each operating system will be required to complete these seasonal startup procedures and submit the certification form that you've completed them. It's not just do it, but we want the certification form that you acknowledge and sign uh, responsible, we did this and uh, submit that to us. And you submit that seasonal startup procedure certification before water is served to the public. Again, the timeliness, we just want to be able to work from our offices and say, yes, we know our systems have certified that they've completed the startup procedure. Now they're serving the, the water to the public. Required startup activities. Notify your primary or your contract operator of the date your public water supply is going to begin serving water to the public. This can be tricky. I mean, you want to make sure your operator is available to you. And so a lot of seasonal systems, you do change your start or end dates of the season based on the season, how warm or cold it is, uh, you know, whether or not there's an interest in your business early or later in the season based on the weather. You might change by a week or two. Well, your operator needs to know when he is going to be required to be called upon and, and complete the things for you. So make sure you give your operators time to come out and do what they need to do. Don't just call and say, hey, I want to open up tomorrow, and expect your operators to be able to do that for you. Um, you're going to want to inspect all your water system components, the sources, the treatment, the distribution, and storage tanks and address any issues that are found prior to opening. Um, you're going to want to activate your sources, open any hydrants, your faucets, flush your water through your entire distribution system. You're going to want to document the dates that you do this. The certification startup procedure is going to ask, what day did you do this? What day did you do that? What day were your samples collected? Um, you're going to collect coliform samples in accordance with a coliform sampling plan on file and you're going to want to get the results of that prior to opening to the public because if you have detections you're going to need to take care of that we don't want you know, systems opening up where you're in the middle of all kinds of total coliform detects coliform samples taken prior to serving water to the public are considered special purpose samples and will not count towards your compliance so if you're not open to the public yet and you have DTEX, that's okay. That's what they're there for. They're not going to be counted against you for regulatory purposes. They're there so that you can get your system cleaned up. Then you collect and get absent results. Then once you open, you need to take your routine sampling for that monitoring period. The samples collected prior to opening, they don't hurt you if they're DTEX, but they're also not truly representative of what you're serving because it's prior to startup. It's the rough water that's coming through. So they don't hurt you um, if there's detections, but once you open, then you have to take your routine compliance samples, your routine sample. Other startup activities you might want to install. Um, if you are a chlorinated system, then you're going to be doing the installation uh, or reset up of your chlorination equipment, make sure it's operating properly, chlorinate the water system and leave the chlorinated water in the distribution system for at least 24 hours, then you're going to flush it out. Of course, anytime, um, if you're ever chlorinating your system, once your system is already open, you have to make sure that you're never gassing off, you have to, your customers, make sure that your remaining uh, potable water and not exceeding the chlorine residuals. Um, and if you have uh, disinfect your atmospheric storage tank or tanks and thoroughly flush them, reinstall water meters if they have to be removed so, uh, during the shutdown, reinstall any backflow preventers, including hose bib vacuum breakers um, on all your threaded taps throughout the distribution system if those have been removed. Um, test all your testable backflow preventers. So this is page one of a seasonal 
startup activities, pre-inspection activities, initial inspection, you know, those well caps right there, 211, is your pump house secure? And these should be things that you're not looking at only during the startup procedure, but especially during your startup procedure. You went away on vacation, your system's all locked up, you come back. Is there any evidence that uh, someone's been messing around with your system? The well casing, make sure that's structurally sound, you don't see any corrosion. Now you've got holes where you've got critters going in. But we were going to list rodents, lizards, birds, you know, but you get the idea. So, I mean, are there critters in there? Do you see evidence of nesting or do you see droppings? Your backup generator, you know, make sure all your equipment's working properly. Make sure your chemicals are stored outside of your zone one. Verify your water meters are working. Make sure your pit's secure and sanitary. Again, no animals, insects. Now, this is the startup procedure certification. You've notified your operator when the public water supply is going to serve. You've inspected all the system components. You've activated the sources, opened the hydrants. You've collected your total coliform samples. So basically, the startup procedure is going to have a minimum list of things that are absolutely required that you do. Your system could have a startup procedure that includes these items and has a bunch of other things defined that you want to do. But for the certification process, we were trying to recommend it startup procedures versus having it be clear that there are certain procedures that are absolutely required. We gave a, a folks a chance to start up summary. A lot of folks do go above and beyond the minimum requirements that we'll set. We wanted to provide an opportunity for people to list the additional activities that they've taken uh, to summarize their startup procedure. If they've gone above and beyond the minimum if you do a lot of work to your system, here's your chance to document it, get it on file. Hey, we do all these extra things besides the minimum. And then there's a certification component where we're going to want to see your printed and signed name and date where you're acknowledging responsibility that these activities have occurred as indicated. Contacts. My email is right there for you. I look forward to hearing from folks and providing assistance as you need it.